Hey everyone, this is Bill K from Sweep Sports Analytics, and it's time for another tutorial. I know it's been a really long time since my last tutorial. Uh, I've been quite busy, though I did have some time to make a bunch of uh, I don't know, cool articles, some nice graphs. You can see them and check them out on my blog, sweepsportsanalytics.com, as well as uh, the social media pages on Instagram and Facebook. I think there's a Pinterest account somewhere. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you can check that out on my blog. And uh, yeah, thanks for all your feedback so far. Uh, it's been great. I've been having a lot of fun uh, doing some nice posts on Reddit and really enjoy the comments there. And actually, one comment from Reddit is what brought me here. So uh, I was doing... I, I posted a graph on the Golden State's Warriors' best uh, shooters. And interestingly enough, this person reached out and said, Hey, can you please do something for my dad? I'm like, what? Uh, who's your dad? And he's like, my dad's Purvis Short. I'm like, wow, Purvis Short. That's a name I've barely heard. Uh, he's a Golden State Warriors legend from a really long time ago. An interesting player, so I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll go in, I'll see what I can do, what, what kind of stats I can find, and what kind of graphs and analytics I can make out of it. So, yep, this is for Purvis Short. So first thing I'll do is, I'm using R, R Studio. You can check out a couple of articles. I'll have my, I'll have links in the video, in the comments section. Uh, well, and I'll be using R Studio for most of my tutorials. So first thing I want to do is, besides installing packages, which you can see and find on the article uh, that I'll be posting, uh, so you'll be able to see you know, how to install the packages. Right now, what I'll be doing is just loading the packages because they've already been installed on my machine. So installing these packages, and then what I want to do is get some stats from my favorite website for stats. Uh, basketballreference.com so let's go to basketballreference.com and see what they have okay there we go cool every NBA player pretty much any kind of stats you want you can find it here I use this when I want to look up a player and kind of see well I when I do my own analytics I try to use this to cross-check and make sure my data makes sense I also use this uh, to pull data. So let's go to Purvis Short. We can see here, just type in his name, and there we go. A whole bunch of stats, and we see the link here and all his stats. So we have per game and regular season playoffs, uh, comparisons we can do here, and everything. So, what I want to do, well, first of all, I want to tell you that you can use this to export this table as a CSV for Excel. You can get this as an Excel workbook. You can embed this into your own website. So basketball reference is awesome. Um, at the same time, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to download thing, anything from basketball reference directly, but I will be using R uh, to download the data. And I'll show you how. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll define the player I want to Analyze, so it's Purvis short. And then I'll get the slug. The slug is this little name up here. So it's short pu01.html. Okay, so I'll define the slug as well. Next up, I'll define the player page URL and the player image URL. Yeah, sorry, I've been I've I caught a cold and I'm still recovering, so sorry about my voice. So okay, so I ran this, which is a paste zero function. So I'm pasting. I'm, what I'm trying to do is get the URL. So what I did is I pasted this plus the slug. I just created pretty much the URL automation. OK, and then I do the same for the image URL, because I want to use the image as well. OK, so I did this. We can look at the URL here. It's basketballreference.com slash player slash s short pu01 html. And you can see that this link here 
I paste it into my browser, it takes me to his page. And also if I paste the image URL in my browser, it takes me to his image. Okay, so yep, I guess pretty easy so far. So we get that's the, the finding the URLs. Then let's try to get the stats. To do this, I run a well. This is a pipe the uh, pipe command, and I run. I use the read HTML an HTML node, and then paste paste this as a table and save it pretty much as a table. I'm gonna read the total stats and save it in the TTL stat uh, data frame and then read the advanced stats. What these look like is look at the total stats here. It's this. So if I go back here we see the we got the regular season total stats. For example, 78, 79, 75 games, 1703 matches played. Go back. 78, 79, 75 games played, 1703 minutes played. So we got this table with a quick uh, function. We just brought it into R. Now the next thing I want to do is merge these two tables. Uh, the way I do this is by using the merge function and then selecting all the columns that are common across both data frames because I don't want to duplicate them. So I'm merging by the season, age, and pretty much yeah, the team, the league, position, game, and match, minutes played because it's common across both data frames. Okay, so I'm merging this. And let's have a look. I'm using the view total stats. So as you can see, might be able to see, from 29 and 32 variables, we have 54 variables, i.e. columns. And it's pretty much like anything and everything we can, well, almost everything we can see from a, a basketball stats standpoint. We have the season, all the way up to you know, effective field goal percentage. Let's keep going to the right, and the basic stats, and then we have some advanced stats like uh, the player efficiency rating, true shooting percentage, and offensive rebound and rebounding percentages, assists percentages, etc. Usage percentage, etc. Okay, so that's. I think this is actually pretty important. You can use Basketball Reference to download and import data, uh, and use and create a new data frame. So right now, this is like really really quick I can do this for any player within a few seconds and have all their stats okay so another nice thing I saw is that we can download uh, Raptor stats from 538 so Raptor is a fairly new uh, data metric basketball metric and let me just look it up so that you can see what it is, and I'll show you then how I got it. Okay. So 538.com, you should definitely follow this if you're a basketball analytics enthusiast. Uh, back in 2019, uh, Nate Silver uh, introduced Raptor, which is a new metric for the modern NBA uh, you can go through this and read this. Uh, they've been running. They, they keep you know, they find how they came up with this, and well, Raptor has been a metric that people look at and analysts look at quite a lot lately. Um, and a cool thing here is that you can uh, download the files off of their GitHub. So clicking on their GitHub uh, directory here, they have links to their files. So that's pretty much what I'm using now. Um, let me just real quick see if they have, okay, they have the methodology explainer here, yeah. So it's pretty much a highlight. 
not the highlight R, is that Raptor is a plus minus statistic that measures the number of points a player contributes to his team's offense and defense per 100 possessions relative to a league average player. So, a player with a 2.1 Raptor rating boosts his team's performance by 2.1 points per 100 possessions while he's on the floor. And just so that you kind of put this into context, um, Stephen Curry in his 2016 season, he boosted his team, uh, he boosted the Golden State Warriors by 10.4 points per, per 100 possessions. That's a lot. So this is like one of the best seasons ever uh, in terms of uh, Raptor ratings. Anyway, we won't go into that too much, uh, but just, yeah, do follow 538. So what I'll be doing is just reading the CSV from GitHub. You can uh, use this code. So here's the historical uh, Raptor uh, data, and here's the, mod the modern. And I will be rbind, which is uh, row bind, adding these on top of each other by rows. Then just using unique in case there were any duplicates, which there weren't, but just in case. So next thing I can do here is merge all these stats. So um, we have a total stats, which is from Basketball Reference, and the Raptor ratings. The thing is that I want to, uh, I need to merge them by a specific uh, column. So I see that total stats, there is no uh, player name, so I'll have to add this. I save the player name as the variable player. Here we go, Purvis Short. So I will add that, and we can see in total stats the last column now is player name Purvis Short for each row, of course, but yeah, it, it'll work. Uh, next, I want to paste, I want to use a season because in the Raptor ratings, the season is uh, based on the the last season. So, like the 1991 season in the NBA means is the 1990-91 season. So, like when the season ends is that's the season we consider. So right now, for example, it's December 19th, 2021, but we're in the 2022 NBA season. So what I want to do here is create a variable season in the total stats that instead of using 78, 79, I will be using um, uh, no, 79, just like that. Okay, so let's do that and let's merge it. And there we go. So let's have a look at the, all the stats here. What we have is Purvis Short these are his seasons and we have a whole bunch of stats here we go all the right to the right there's limited to the 50 columns keep going and we will have the Raptor um, ratings which since it's too far back we don't have everything but we do have actually the Raptor total so real quick I'm not gonna go through this too much but his Purvis Short's best season was let's see I have to change this to add everything. 75. Well, actually, I, I can't. I am not able to see this right now. But oh, actually, I can. Okay, I got another idea. Uh, there we go. Raptor offense. 2.14. That was his fourth season, fourth row up here. So we go all the way back. 1982. That was a season where he had his best Raptor rating in terms of points. Anyway, so that's uh, we're, I'm done with the first part, which is pretty much just gathering all the stats we can get. And there are additional stats we can get. Uh, but for now, this is just what I'm going to be focusing on. Okay, so next thing I want to do is start creating a graph. 
So, first of all, I want to go look in at all the stats that we have. So I do the str uh, function, which shows me in this way here, uh, the, the variables that we have in the columns, pretty much. Okay, so right now, let's say what I want to do is I look at the shooting stats, which is three-point percentage, free throw percentage, effective field goal, two shooting, and usage percentage. I can do that, or I can do the main stats, which is points, total rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, and I'll also add the games played. Okay, so I'll look at the main stats for now. What I did is selected the main stats and used uh, define a variable called main stats with the stats that I want to add. Um, then I'll go through this process here. So we have a new data frame, well, uh, yeah, a new value of stats here, and I will create a new table, a new data frame, by selecting the season and the team the person was in and unlisting all the stats. Now this unlist, what it does is this. <clears throat> it takes a list of the stats and then just plans it out. So we have uh, for each season the team, the person, the uh, team on uh, which Purvis Short was, and his basic stats. Okay. Um, now I don't want to look at the totals because it's kind of bi well, biased. We can look at totals, but right now I want to look at the averages. So what I'm doing is using this DF average. So what I want to do is uh, average uh, divide pretty much, divide all the values by games played. So I know that there are, we start from the third column and we end one column before the end and divide by the last column. So the way to do this is create a data frame called DF average where I divide the third column until one before the end and divide by games played. Okay, so there we go. I have the average per year and I will add this to my main data frame. So here we go. Well, I will use this as my main data frame. So I'm C binding the first two columns with the average. So the average has the third column and on. I will be using the um, the rest, well, everything else. Okay. Then I'm going to be using the, defining the DF stats column, which is a gather function. So the, what this does is it will take this data frame, where you can see it has season team and each stat here, and I will be converting this and transforming it into where is it DF stats into this here where I will have the season the team the stat category and the stat value okay we want it this way okay so next thing we do I've noticed that there were some some well, in this case, there isn't. Next thing we do is um, DF stats. We want to add the games played here as well. Just a second. So in DF stats, I want to add the games played per season. Uh, mainly, be, well, for the graph I'm going to be creating. Okay, so we have DF stats uh, data frame. Okay. So that's it, we've prepared the data. Now let's go to the chart creation. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to be using the library Vredis. Um, this I mean, is a pretty much a preference of mine because some uh, libraries have cool colors. And this is one of them, one of the color maps I use. So you can download anything else you want, but just for reference, 
Fluidus has some uh, easy to use, you know, color scale and everything like this. So I like this. I use this a lot, but you can use anything you want. So okay, I'm um, using this library and I'm getting the columns and adding the points to the graph. So first thing is a graph that looks like this. Okay, it's loading, loading, loading. There we go. Come on. Yep. There's our chart, but I really don't understand anything. Uh, I can see these dots here, I can see that there are some seasons here, but still, it's not presentable. But what I do see is that points, for example, here. I can see the points. Um, looks like an average per short was really, really good in his 84, 85 season. Anyway. What I'll do now is add some lines using the geom line group and grouping the stat categories. And what this looks like is this. We got some lines. Cool. The next part is adding the labels. And I'm using the geom text repel uh, labels part because this kind of helps in not, uh, well, it helps. This, the GM text repel, it doesn't, uh, what's it called? Okay, each label does not overlap the other label. So, as you can see, like they, these two dots are really, really close to each other. These points uh, with GM text repel, they won't touch each other. It will be with some distance. That's what the repel means, pretty much. Okay. So I added the labels, but I only added it to the last season. I wanted to use only that because I don't want to have uh, this everywhere. I just want to have it at the end. Pretty much, I want to get rid of this at some point. But to get rid of this, I need to have the legend somewhere. I need to know which, what each thing is. OK, so next I'll be ed editing the axis. So. Uh, I'll be taking it from zero to the nearest fifth of the maximum. Because right now this is 20, but I, I can tell this is 25, but I want to see the 30 here. So I edited the axis. Let's have a look at what this looks like. And there we go. It's actually, I don't see the 30, but at least I see the 25 here. Uh, there's still work to do, as you can tell, but it's kind of looking a bit better. Uh, so what I'll do is add the title, the subtitle, and the caption. Uh, so using the labs uh, function and adding the title, the subtitle, removing the axis uh, titles, and adding a caption down there with sweep support analytics and the source. So. There we go. Perfect short career stats from 1978 to 9 to 1989, 90. Uh, but right now I want to do some more changes, so I'll be removing the legend position. I'm adding, making this none. Uh, modifying the plot title, the plot subtitle, changing the axis x the the way this axis is. I want to change it so that it's more readable. Um, and then make some other colors and margin changes. So let's do that. And I do this by adding it to a theme. So let's see what this looks like. Nah, it's a bit better. No more axis there, so it's kind of cleaner. This is in the middle. Uh, and the x axis, we can see that it's like. Uh, it tells us the year, the team, and how many games played. Now, one thing I want to do here is add where the, the 
where Purvis Short changed his team. So we see that I want to add a line pretty much that kind of tells me that this person switched teams here or here. Now to do this, I create a little function here where, first of all, for uh, the whole length of his career, which is how many years? Seasons? 12 seasons. Uh, I want to see if he changed teams and then add a point at a line there. So I'll just run this. You can have a look at what exactly it does. Don't want to explain it now. And then add a geom V line, a geom vertical line uh, where he changed teams. So what this looks like is. this. So without using <clears throat> too many things, just uh, making a few changes, this is Purvis Short's career stats. Year by year, uh, from 78 to 79 to 1990, where he finished his career at the New Jersey Nets. Now I do make a few changes uh, by, well changes, uh, aesthetic changes by using my own uh, function for a theme so this is my sweep sport analytics theme uh, you can have a look at it if you want to make your own changes uh, but I recommend you using your own theme so that you have a, a common theme across all your graphs it's a pretty easy thing to do and cool thing to do it saves you a lot of time pretty much so I added my theme my custom theme and let's see what it looks like it looks like this and I'm like what I didn't want this to happen because I took this away and obviously what has happened is that using this theme I pretty much removed the previous theme that we had set up with uh, all those changes no problem though we'll just uh, add that back so, come on, load. And there we go. So, this is yeah, this is the, the Purvis Shorts career stats. We can see that he, this is pretty impressive, like back then, scoring 25 points on average or over 20 points on average, that's pretty good. And it's, I'm not too surprised, I mean, Pervis Short was uh, drafted fifth, I think. Yeah, first round, fifth overall in the 1978 draft. Uh, 12 years, you know, his career... Uh, points were 17 point, was 17.3 in 842 games. That's that's pretty good. Over two meters tall, six foot six foot seven. Great efficiency, 47.9 percent. And and funny thing is, I think this is when the three points were introduced. It was it 79, 79-80 season. Let me quickly. Yeah, his first season, he had. Uh, 10.6 uh, points on average. Next season it went up. However, he didn't use three pointers a lot. He actually, well, actually not at all. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so we got this uh, this graph here. Now I do want to add his image. So I've created these functions here where you can read PNG or JPEG images. Um, so I'll just run the, I'll create the functions, get, get JPEG, it reads from, what I'll, I'll do here is read from the image URL. Just remember, image URL in the beginning was this basketball reference image. So I'll save this to a variable pick. And now, I've, you see this note here it says use this below if the chart has percentages and that's for uh, free throw percentages and everything like that if we have that on the chart 
but now we have absolute numbers so uh, what I'll do here is uh, create a chart with this annotation custom and add it at the pick using these variables x min minus 1 which means it starts around here until 3 and then this y min y max you have to play around with these values pretty much uh, but I think we got it here I do think I did it correctly there we go now this image doesn't look perfect so it really depends on how you save it so the way I'll save it is by adding the name and the name will be here is the main stats and I use gg save and the name will be player dash chart type which is main stats and I'll use the uh, width 7 height 7 dpi 400 and that's pretty much it's easier to save this way uh, using what's it called uh, on Instagram pretty much. sorry I just got okay I found the the image, the graph, so I'll open it up here. So this is what it looks like. This is how what I saved. It's a square, easier for Instagram, and it's a bit zoomed in. So this is Purvis Short, Purvis Short's career stats. Um, yeah, with the source down here, and we can see that. And this is this is impressive. I think uh, I'm not sure many players got this. Got over 25 points per game. Of course, there's not much we can tell between the uh, well, the blocks and everything is like really low percentage, and everything. But uh, yeah, everything else we can we can look at it. So, I created a whole f uh, series of uh, of what's it called of commands that we use to do an analysis, and I want to show you how quick I can use this to create an analysis for another player. So. Okay, I'm a Knicks fan. I was born and raised in Queens, New York. I think the first thing I ever saw on TV was a Michael Jordan game against uh, John Starks and Patrick Ewing back in the 90s when I was growing up. So okay, I have a bunch of different players here. You can use these for your analysis, but I will be using Patrick Ewing uh, for this next analysis. So... I use player and slug Patrick Ewing and I'll go back up okay first thing get player stats run this run this we got the URLs then let's read the stats we got the total stats just to confirm I'll open this up yep yeah, there we go Patrick Ewing um, then let's get his Raptor ratings, merge everything. Then let's select the stats, and I'll use I'll use the shooting stats here, which is three point percentage, free throw percentage, effective field goal. Actually, I'll use two point percentage because Patrick Ewing didn't shoot many three pointers. Um, or actually, I will use. Where is it? Um, I'll use his total rebound percentage. Actually, no. You know what? This is shooting stats, so I'll just keep it this way. Sorry about the confusion. So, yep. Uh, shooting stats. Stats here. Shooting stats. And let's start using this. Now, okay, I got the DF, the data frame. As you can see, it's really, really low. Well, not really low. Okay, usage is in, is 26.5, but 2 point percentage is 47, 0.477. So I want to change this and multiply it by 100. Uh, okay, so I'll go through and just multiply these by 100. And then DF stats. Make this in this nice format here. 
and do a couple of filters and voila we got it okay so let's create the static chart I don't even look at these I just close it and just run it this way Obviously, there's some sort of error. So, okay, I know what happened. Yeah, sorry about that. So I'll run this all the way from the beginning. So adding the team line breaks here. We got the first chart. Okay, put the stats. Okay, and then we got the and I actually see an error here, but I'll fix it. Okay, so the error I made here is that when I was doing the modificate with the creating the season changes here. I made a mistake, so the 99-2000 season is missing. So I'll actually go and fix it now, since I'll be sharing this code anyway. Uh, the way I did this is up here where I have the season merge. Okay, so we have the total stats season. So if we look at this, we'll see 1900. Because what I do is I get the substring of the season, which is 15, uh, 19, etc., 2000, and then get. So, okay, well, let me explain this a little bit, bit better. Um, over here, I get the first two parts, 19, and then the last part. This obviously causes an, causes an error when we go from 19, 19 to 0, 0. So there are multiple ways to do this, but all I'll do here is replace um, in season. Okay, it's 1900 with 2000. Okay, does that make sense? So what I did is I'm replacing any instance of 1900 with 2000. Okay, so I'll have to run this again. Uh, let's just confirm that it's all okay. Oh, yep, 86 to 2000, and we see 2000 here, etc. Uh, let's go back. I will select the shooting stats. here gather um, then let's use some filters here that we have to do merge and then run the static chart So now we see 99-2000 season. Okay, and now let's add the image. You save the picture. So now the chart has percentages. So instead of using this here, since the numbers here are a bit different, I will be using uh, something different. So I use that. Have a look at the chart. 
There we go, Patrick Ewing, my man. Okay, let's do the chart type is um well this is shooting stats. I'll save it. Let's open this up. Yeah, there we go. Patrick Ewing career stats. Now I know this doesn't look the way I want it to, um, because covering the 75, it's a bit outside of the uh, margin, but it's generally okay. Now looking at the graph, I see a few issues. For example, two point percentage and effective field goal percentage. It's almost the same. It's overlapping. This makes perfect sense because. Uh, if you recall, effective field goal percentage is uh, pretty much all the two pointers plus 1.5 times the three pointers divided by the total shots taken. So, since Patrick Ewing didn't have a lot of three pointers, uh, it makes perfect sense that uh, two point percentage and effective field goal percentage is at the same exact, exact point. So, we can actually remove one of these. Uh, but, you know, this gives a good idea of generally where a player how a player performed over each season like his usage with the Knicks uh, look how low it was here and it was actually at its lowest point here which is kind of interesting because uh, 99 2000 Knicks well pretty good team I want to see where who else the Knicks had in 1999, 2000. It was a year before he got traded. And I think he got injured that season. Yep. That was when the Knicks, uh, yep, a, season, a year after the Knicks went to the playoffs and lost uh, to the Spurs, and his usage started, had started going down already. I mean, it was really tough. The Knicks made a great playoff run up to 99 here. He got injured a lot, and then after that, he just went downhill. I mean, I don't even know how he got the the willingness to play after such a huge career with amazing performances and just uh, just missing out on the finals against Tim Duncan and David Robinson back then. But we can see his free throw percentages here, how they fluctuated, what a great star he was from like his third year. It was just amazing. But yeah, oh man, reminiscent reminiscent of uh, these good times so yeah okay well this is pretty much it uh, what we went through today is how to pull data from basketball reference and from 538's uh, github repository and then selecting stats modifying them and creating a chart where we can see a player's career stats uh, last thing I want to do since I'm on here I'm, I'll, be, I'll be adding this to Instagram soon um, is just doing some Kevin Durant stats. I'm kind of curious to see what he looks like and what he, how he was. Uh, so let me have a look at his stats. Because I don't know if it's just me, but I think Kevin Durant had like his really 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 awesome season this year uh, I don't I think it might be his best season ever I'm not sure so what I'll do is look at his advanced stats um, let me see what those look like uh, stats here Okay, his player efficiency rating. Ah, it's it's good. It was not the best he's ever had. Sorry, just 
sec. Looks like there are a few duplicates there, so I'm going to remove the duplicates by using the unique function. All stats. Uh -huh. Okay, let's look again. Um, okay, his raptor, his total raptor, yep, it's it's good. It's not the best, though. It's not the best he's had. Interesting. Well, still haven't removed the duplicates. But, yeah, well, he, he's good. It's just not his best season. Hmm. I thought it was his best season, but anyway. Stats don't always paint the best picture, but... They do give us a lot more insights. Anyway, I'll have a look at this house and find myself because I don't want to bore you with these things. But yeah, what we did today is pull data off a of basketball reference, pull data off of 538, and then modify data frames into something that we can use to create a chart. We created a chart and saved it, and now we can publish it. So thanks a lot for watching. I'm really sorry this went a lot longer than I wanted. I thought it would be really, really quick. But I guess that's how I am. I just uh, I like talking, I guess. So thanks. Uh, please subscribe if you like this. Uh, I would really appreciate if you reached out and told me anything else, any kind of other analytics you would want to see and uh, any tutorials you would like. Just keep in mind that I mainly use R. And... Also, I can maybe help you with uh, any Excel graphics and graphs. Um, um, I know that Python is also the other option. It's really, really cool. I'm just not a Python user much. But you can have a look at some uh, an article that I wrote a few months back about uh, choosing between Python and R, or even how to get started with sports analytics, either as a hobby or perhaps professionally. So thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, see you soon. It won't be four months since for my next tutorial, I promise that. Okay, cheers. Thanks everyone.